racing overseas. We've got guys racing. Um, there's streetcar racing going on. Uh, no prep uh, season. We don't know what's going on there. NHRA is probably, what, 30 days away from the yeah, 35 yeah. days not away hard. from the start. Not long, man. Hard to believe. What What are the storylines? Uh, I thought about this before we went live. What are some of the things that you're most excited about? Last week, we talked a little bit about what we were excited to see in terms of races. We talked about the U.S. Street Nationals. We talked about Indy going back to Monday. I think that's a big deal. We talked about the second running of the St Texas Stampede of Speed. We talked about PDRA Pro Stars. We talked about Sick Week. What I want to talk a little bit about now here in this uh, first hour of the West Buck Show, and I want to thank you guys again for tuning in. Um, throw this in the comments because uh, I asked this question to the masses. You know, what, what are the most interesting storylines headed into 2022? What are your guys? What, what are you looking to see unfold? I'm, I'm talking things like Tony Stewart as a team owner, um, Leah and Matt's success in that camp. What what the future looks like for Don Schumacher Racing. Um, how Bo, Bo Butner's return to NHRA Pro Stock is going to go, how Lyle Barnett's campaign in, in twin turbo with a twin turbo car is going to go from start to finish. You know, Mike, I'll throw it to you first. I mean, what are, what are some of the things that you're most excited about um, storyline or, or happening wise in our sport? Well, you just took them all, so Sorry. I'm out. I wanted to say that. just ran through like, No, but you can, you can go back. One, you, like you can say, one. hey, the Tony Stewart <laughs> thing is I was trying to – be prepared in case you guys didn't have any, you know, I was trying to put some layups yeah, there. Those were hey, all softballs. You grab those me, or you swing at We're it. all, we're all pros now. We're good. We, we can okay. come up with this stuff. Okay. No, fair enough. You're good. You're good. Um, honestly, the Tony Stewart thing I think is going to be big. I want to see, I'm, I'm more interested to see what he does off the track. We've talked about this presentation, uh, sponsor engagement, um, hospitality, all the stuff that he brings not on the track, not just on track performance, what the cars look like, graphics. I mean, just all kinds of stuff that comes along with uh, these big teams and the, him coming from all these other forms of motorsports, what he brings, what his interpretation of how it should be done in drag racing, what that looks like. Uh, and then the NHRA Pro Mod rules. I'm excited to see that. Um, we talked about this a little bit on Monday. I hope that there are not zero cars that roll out with a screw blower. In Gainesville, that would be pretty disappointing. I want to see at least one. I want to see what they do. Um, and I want to see what the changes that were made throughout the season, how these cars, you know, whatever testing they get to start the season, um, how they come out swinging in Gainesville. Solid. JT, what's, uh, what are you excited about? Um, about everything that you mentioned. But uh, besides <laughs> that, I mean, I, I am excited. Uh, I'd like to see in No Prep Kings on the Race Your Way In. I, I'm curious on – who all we're going to see down there and who's going to try it. Um, there's just too much money on the line, I think, for a lot of these professionals not to throw their hat in the ring. I would sure think so. I mean, uh, Lyle, to, I mean, right? obviously we're, we're excited about what you have going on, but what, what, what's your, what, what are the most exciting storylines that you think exist in the sport right now? I mean, obviously that, that directly affects me. Um, I agree with, with Mike. You know, I'm going to see – I would love to see how many of the people who claimed that they were going to bring a screw blower out actually do it. You know, um, yeah. I found out today actually that, uh, that Jason Scruggs is, is in the process of, of getting his car together with a screw on it. And 110% believes that the screw blower is not going to be competitive and he thinks he can do faster. With screws, and I know that for a fact, but so, um, he's going to come to Bradenton in a couple of weeks and test and verify that that is the case. And then I think, if I had to put my money on it, I would say Jason Scruggs, who, you know, one of the most notorious screw blower racers there has ever been. Uh, I think he shows up to Gainesville with a root blower on. <clears throat> and I think if I think if Jason Scruggs and Stevie Jackson and the Janices, those three, if those three show up Gainesville with a root blower on, then the NHRA, I suspect an immediate rule change to try and go a different direction with the screw blower. That's a good point. And, uh, but don't it's, you it's think that, that, to hear like, that that speaks to the problem, though, right? Yeah, it's exciting to hear that Jason Scruggs is going to try it, though. I mean, if anyone yeah. can get it going quickly, well, and that's it's him and, and Stevie. So, and I know that his dad is 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 determined that it's going to work, and really, the reason that they're going to Bradenton is so he can prove to his dad that it's not going to work. <laughs> so, um, now they may go down there and haul ass, and you may see him show up to, to the Gators with the screw on it. But I know that as of now, you know, and and I don't know the first thing about running the screw blower, but 
I know that a combination of the 75 over a 390 gear and 2,760 pounds or whatever they have them at doesn't sound like it's going to work. You know? So, um, but time will tell, you know, I know that the Janices are, are, are testing one. Obviously, Stevie and those guys are going to test one or have, um, you know, the cars in Bahrain now. But uh, like I said, if those three show up in Gainesville and they are all unanimously, unanimously running the routes, then – the yeah, writing, sure it's, I mean, my it's thing right is there. though that they will have, will that ship have sailed? Like the, the wow. screw, like if well, those three guys can't make it work and they spend the time, energy and money to try and it doesn't, is there any change that the NHRA could make that would send them back to it? You know what I mean? I don't know. You know, there's only a handful, you know, of which there's only a handful of us that race NHRA Pro Mod anyway, but I mean, there's maybe one Stevie and those guys may be the only ones that can afford, right. you know, to, I'm not, you know, yeah. Jason Scruggs and them have a very successful arm. The Janices are obviously doing well with partnered up with JR, but that doesn't mean that they can go spend a couple hundred thousand dollars after the first race of the season to completely change everything they have over the crew blower. I don't know what all it takes to change it over. So I'm, that's what I was going to ask. I don't know. Do I know about as much about it probably as you do Lyle, yeah, as far as what it, what the differences are is outside of just the engine itself, what it takes yeah. to change a car over from screw to roots or, or I mean, vice versa. You know, obviously for them to try the screw, um, there's going to be some, some modifications made to the hood, right? You know, yeah, like the, the screw blower is bigger and wider and, you know, so, do you cut your front end? Like, what do you do? You know, because the front maybe end have, all maybe have two, yeah, maybe have two, maybe have two, two, uh, two nose two clips. I don't know. Well, I mean, there yeah. you go. You know, a, a, a molded front end. I don't know what all they cost, but you got to get them painted. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just, I, I, feel, I, I know that I'm not the only one, but I just wish that the NHRA would have given maybe those three I just, I just named time to test, you know, and before right. they made a rules decision. Right. Because I think it's so far off right now that nobody's even going to try it. You know, I don't, I don't know that you'll see any with the exception of, of Stan Shelton. I don't think you'll see any show up, you know, to to run it. So I don't, we'll just have to see. And it's weird. And what's unfortunate, though, is we we broke this news, I think, Monday night. I can't remember exactly when we talked about it, Lyle, but. You know, it's set, all indications are that Brandon Snyder will not be competing on the NHRA Pro Mod Series in 2021. He was someone, or 2022, he was someone we pointed to as adopting the screw blower. We saw him down at the Snowbird Outlaw Nationals last December with a screw blower uh, between the frame rails, a screw blown Hemi between the frame rails of that Camaro. By all indications, he, Jim Whiteley, that JNA service kind of team are focused primarily on the Midwest Drag Racing Series and their Outlaw Pro Mod division. So if you subtract those two cars, Brandon Snyder and Jim Whiteley, I mean, that's the, the bummer, right? I mean, you're losing a couple of cars. I don't know that we're going to gain enough. I'm just very well, interested to see where I, I know. You know yeah. I mean, you know, I don't be, know that we're going to gain any face, right? That, well, I think it would be. Saying. So uh, Lyle, Lyle believes there, there will be zero. So that's crazy. I, I mean, that's, I well, that seems like the safe bet at this point. If, you know, if Stan Shelton and those guys, do come out um, and and run some NHRA Pro Mod. I know that that's all they're going to run. Um, so maybe one, right? But we've lost two, you know. And Brandon Snyder, for as long as I've been watching NHRA Pro Mod, is somebody you talk about if you talk about NHRA Pro Mod, right? And to think that that he's not coming back, like, what does that say? You know, like what I want to know what message or what the NHRA took. Why is it there? You know, I mean, I have asked really know why i'm assuming it's just you know funding and, and and this that and the other but um i mean it's it's a shame really you know i mean it jim whiteley's not leaving the nhra he's just leaving pro mod you know he's going to drive an alcohol funny car and and going back to <clears throat> to join his wife there so i don't know man it's uh, a weird time for sure and i, I think it is a complete crapshoot on how gainesville is going to be like i don't yeah, it's tough because we we rally all the troops at the at the PRI show, right? We were, we were just talking about this in the green room, Mike, John Waldy, um, you, me, several other, Lonnie Grimm, Raleigh Miller, uh, Tyler Crossno was there. We had this collection of people that seem to be all invested in you know the the well being of fast door slammer drag racing, but then you talk about. You know, the goal at that event or at that the Drag Illustrated Pro Mod Summit that we held uh, Saturday morning, wasn't it? Friday morning, excuse me, at the PRI show this past December in Indianapolis was to 
I think the stated goal was how can we get pro mod in HRA pro mod back to a 30 plus cars per event type of situation. Just for a reference tool, I pulled up the qualifying order for the U S nationals last year. And I see, you know, there's 17 cars on that list. So we had 11 at the season ending event in, in Las Vegas. How, what is the pathway back to 30 cars in pro mod and I'm telling you guys, I mean, I do not at all mean to be negative. You guys know that I, I'm not trying to let this thing swing negative, but we do got to be honest about this stuff in order for this show to have heft and have weight and be meaningful. This is a real problem because, I mean, if just basic math says we're a long way away from 30 cars in the in the pits for ProMod, 